Hi guys, Shannon LaDonna West here. Good morning and welcome to WLC's online church experience. Here at Word of Life Church, we're all about pursuing Jesus, loving people, and transforming the world. And every single thing we do points to those three things. If this is your first time worshiping with us this morning, make sure to drop a comment below in the comment section. We'd love to get connected with you. Now we're getting ready to move into our worship experience. So Shannon, would you like to pray us in? Absolutely. So everybody join in with me. Father God, we just give you uh, all the honor and all the glory. We thank you so much for um, just being able to come together in so many different ways just to worship you, Father. So I ask as we begin this service that you just bless those who are online watching with us. Bless the worship, Father, and uh, just bless this word that is getting ready to come forth. We give you all the honor in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, WLC, and it's an honor yet to meet again and just spend some time in worship. Just invite you in your living room, wherever you are, just join us and let's worship our Father. Amen. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down 
Hi guys, Shannon West here with your Vision 2020 update. 
Man, I mean, what a crazy month, right? We all know uh, March wasn't what we thought it was going to be. Uh, going into the month, we actually had five crusades scheduled and obviously due to COVID-19, every single one of those were, were canceled. But guess what? This isn't a report of, of, of gloom or, or sadness because still God showed up mightily on the scene. I want to give you a few updates of, of what still took place last month. Um, but first, before I do that, I want to remind you, remember a couple months ago we did an extra offering for those 22 little girls that were being auctioned off uh, in Southeast Asia? Guess what? We won. We got all 22 girls in safety. Uh, they're, they're in an orphanage right now being watched after, and the whole pedophile ring was busted up. Um, I don't have the exact number of how many people were arrested, but because of your support and because of, of your prayers, those 22 children, uh, little girls, are sleeping safe tonight. So thank you very much. And uh, we've been supporting a ministry, Global Outreach, um, where it's a complete online ministry. They have millions of people from all over the world every day visit this site. It, with different searches like, I, you know, is there a God or I'm so sad or I'm so lonely and they're led to these websites and this ministry ministers to them. Um, we take part in supporting the part that, that happens not only all over the world, but right here in the United States. And I'm happy to uh, report that last month um, we took part in over 2,500 um, people visiting this website. We had 440 decisions made for Jesus Christ. Amen. And 47 of those are, are continuing to come back for discipleship. Um, so, man, it's just amazing things are happening. So here we are. Listen to this. Even though everything that took place with 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 the lockdowns and all over the world and and everything that's going on we still had we still have people that are that are doing on the ground evangelism and we still were able to lead over 12,000 people to Jesus Christ last month. We did have an update from Guatemala at the end of January with an additional 30,000. So I was able to record over 42,000 souls uh, uh led into the kingdom for the month of uh, March. So God bless you. Listen, let's keep doing it. I got a report the other day uh, from one of our ministers that said, I, I can't go and do my, my live stuff. So I've been doing it on Facebook and, and actually was able to report some salvations through Facebook. Uh, so guys, this is when we get to stand up and we get to change the world one person at a time, right? God bless you. We'll see you next month. Look, we're over 6.4 million. Amen. Glorious. God bless you. We'll see you next month. Shannon, that was an amazing video. What a great update. You guys, I just want to let you know, here's a few announcements going on at Word of Life Church. So one thing that we really want to make sure is that everybody has their Right Now Media account. You guys, next week we're getting ready to launch a church-wide series called Thriving in Babylon, and that's going to tie us to our Right Now Media. So if you haven't gotten your Right Now Media account, make sure to send us a, drop us a line, put a comment below let us know that you need access it's a free membership it's available to um anyone who wants it so just make sure you get connected with us and we can send you that invitation out also just to let everybody know we also are doing drive-in church through the month of april our drive-in services start at 10 a.m so if you want to get out of the house and not worship online you're more than welcome to join us uh next sunday at our drive-in church and uh, I think that's all I have. What about you, Shannon? Yeah, I don't want to tell you what, the drive-in church has been absolutely amazing. We had a wonderful Easter. So um, we love doing the online worship, and we love having our drive-in church. So, so hey, guys, I just wanted to tell you, thank you so much. You know, it's like, it's like the church and the family hasn't even missed a beat when it came to tithing and our offerings with Vision 2020. As you've seen in the report, uh, we're able to still sow into many different ministries. So we want to still give you the opportunity to, to keep uh, being able to bless uh, uh, the kingdom. Amen? So. Yeah. Uh, for tithing, we, we can do it three different ways here at, at WLC. You can tithe online at WLM.org, uh, or you can text. The number will be up, so you can see that text to give. Or, hey, listen, if you're old school and you like writing a check or dropping off cash, we're here during the week. We've actually got some drop boxes. You can come on up. You can put it in the drop box, and we'll get it, or you can take it to the office and give it to us. So we just want to honor you. We thank you so much for your, for your uh, continuing to give. So God bless you.
Welcome, church. I'm going to start a seven-week series today called Thriving in Babylon. So Babylon is that worldly type of a place, and you say, you know, it's hard. It's hard to live in the United States right now or whatever part of the world you're in. It's, it's hard with all the things going around. It's hard with the oppression going on and, and the positions government is taking and some of the laws going on. You know, it's hard to live in Babylon with, with the bombardment of pornography and all the different things that are thrown at people. But I'm here to tell you, you can thrive in Babylon. Your situation, whatever it is and however bad it is, you can thrive in it. You may have just went through the worst season in your life. You can still thrive, and I'm going to prove it to you today from the Word of God. So this is part one of a seven-part series called Thriving in Babylon. And if you are not excited, and if you your faith doesn't rise a thousand times, then I didn't do my job, because I'm going to preach to you the Word of God out of the book of Daniel. And I'm going to show you in the book of Daniel how the Hebrews that were God's people, that were all of a sudden enslaved in Babylon. They were taken against their will and enslaved there. They were even promoted and blessed and did well with the Lord, even while under an oppressive king. I'm going to show you how this works, okay? So I'm going to cover chapters 1 and 2 today in this series called Thriving in Babylon. Now, Babylon was the most wicked city on earth, in fact, Biblically, it has been identified as the most wicked city of all time ever. In fact, it was destroyed and told it will never be rebuilt again. It was under such a judgment. It was so accursed. God says, I will never allow this city to be built again. Now, in the book of Revelation, it calls it Mystery Babylon, which is all the amalgamation of all the false religions and all the commerce and, and government things, the combination of commerce, government, and religion, worldly, worldly commerce, worldly government, world religion, wrapped up into one, this world system called Mystery Babylon in the book of Revelation towards the end of the book. The word or phrase Mystery Babylon, the word mystery, comes from the same word we get mystical or occult. This city was given entirely over to the occult. In fact, the official religion of Babylon, of the city, was New Age occultism. So when we say something is New Age, it's not really new. It's, it's very, very, very old. It goes back to Mystery Babylon. Astrology, New Age, crystals, all the things involved in that. Now, the king of Babylon is the man known as Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar in the story in chapter 1 and 2 of the book of Daniel, in chapter 1 and 2, it says he militarily goes into Jerusalem and militarily sieges it and captures the people, enslaves the people, takes all the sacred, sacred things out of the temple of God and takes it with him and puts it in the idol's temple in order to make a mockery of the things of God, saying, I have conquered both God and man. I've conquered all the gods, the gods of the Hebrews and the other gods. He believed he was king of kings and lord of lords. Nebuchadnezzar believed he was god of all gods. So he enslaves the people. Among these are four Hebrews, Daniel and he's, his three compadres, his three friends. And this story about Daniel and his three friends, these four, gets very, very interesting. First of all, when he captures um, Jerusalem and takes everyone as slaves, and, and he identifies these young men as handsome, as smart, articulate, and all these things, and so he kind of takes them in as interns. But the first thing he does is he changes their names, and he gives them new names in slavery. Heard a preacher one time, he pastors one of our campuses, Tim Nicholson, he preached a message that has stuck with me now for two decades called slave names. And what he said in this message is, you have your birth name and you have your Christian heritage name and identity, but when Satan goes after you, he tries to give you a slave name. He tries to attach something in you to change your identity and make you no longer see yourself as a child of God, someone in victory, but he gives you a slave name. 
And in the story, he, he said his slave name was when a teacher just inadvertently says, well, Tim, you're just slow in math. And when he heard that slow in math, that became his identity. And when he'd go to do the simplest math, he couldn't even process it, even though he was actually very intelligent and, and a deep thinker. But yet... He believed that slave name about himself. He believed he was inferior. He was dumb. He was slow in math. So it, it carried with him even into his adult life. I don't know if someone said something to you. You're trash. You're used goods. You're no good. You're not smart. Whatever it is, you know, once a criminal, always a criminal. You're a loser. If someone has said something, decreed something to you, and that stuff didn't stay on the outside but entered in, and has now changed the way you see yourself. Maybe someone called you a derogator, a slut, a, a, you know, a drunk, a, you're, a, you're a whatever it is, you know, just pick it. I mean, there's a lot of those things that go around. When someone says that about you, you cannot own that. Yes, maybe you did a wrong thing. Maybe you did get drunk, and maybe you had an issue with that for years. But you cannot identify yourself as that perpetually, or you will have adopted a slave name, and that itself will keep you in slavery, keep you in bondage. Maybe you went through a bad marriage and certain abusive things were said to you in that marriage. You'll never keep any man happy. You'll never keep any woman happy. You cannot buy into this new identity. Your identity is in Christ. The Bible says you're an overcomer. It says greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It says you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm trying to tell you that when you're caught up in Babylon and you're, you're in a bad place and, and they try to attach things to you, don't let it attach. Rebuke it. Say, I renounce that. I rebuke that. That's not what I am. That might have been what I was, but that is not what I am or who I am now. So King Nebuchadnezzar enslaves these men. And while they were technically slaves, they were not enslaved on the inside. They were still victorious. So he, uh, Nebuchadnezzar transfers all the holy things that are in God's temple, brings it into the idol's temple, make mockery, takes the Hebrews and picks these four and says, you're going to be interns to me. And he does bad things to them. And then he puts them in the, his school. And in his school, they teach them night and day the occult. But Daniel says, I will not let these things affect me. I will not let the king's education change who I am and change what I believe. I'll not let the king's food and drink because they were told to eat things and drink things that were improper for the Hebrews to eat and drink. But he committed that he would not be defiled. You can be undefiled even in the world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. Just because you're in the world, that doesn't mean the world has to be in you. You don't have to adopt the theory where everybody sins, everyone falls short every day, all the time. You can't help stop sinning. No, sin is a choice, and you can make a decision each time whether you're going to do that or whether you're going to reject that. And if you can reject it once, you can reject it ten times. If you can reject it for a day, you can reject it for a week. In other words, you don't have to sin. I realize Christians trip up. I get that. But don't buy into the lie that you have to always be doing things wrong because it is not true. Daniel proved that. He remained undefiled while living in Babylon. Babylon was not reigning on the inside of him. Now, the king has this dream. It terrifies him. And he rounds up all the wise men of Egypt, and that meant the, the occultists, the astrologers, and the people into all that stuff. And he says, tell me what my dream was. And if you tell me what my dream was without me telling you, then I, I'll know you're hearing from the gods. Tell me what my dream was, and then tell me the interpretation of it. So he didn't want to tell them his dream and say, now interpret this for me, because then maybe they can make up an interpretation that was similar to the dream. He says, the way I'll know you're hearing from the gods is if you could tell me what I dreamed, because I only know what I dreamed, it was last night, and then tell me the interpretation. And if not, I will execute you. And the wise men said, only the gods can know what you dream. No human being can. Only the gods can know what you dream. We don't know what you dream. And King Nebuchadnezzar says, if you don't tell me the dreams, you will be executed. Or the dream, you will be executed. Daniel, the child of God, the, the uh, Hebrew, the child of God, 
He steps in and intervenes and says, God will show me the dream. God will show me the dream, and I will tell it to you, and it'll bring salvation to all the people that would be executed. Now, these were not his people that were going to be executed. These were the paganistic, worldly people. He cared for them. There are certain Christians I know, it's almost like they don't care about the unbelievers. They, they see people on TV that they despise. Let's say people of different political beliefs that are very anti-God and very wicked. Man, when I see these people on TV, my heart goes out to them. I don't want them to be deceived. I don't want them to end up just ruining their life and other lives. I, don't, I, I, I want to see them find the Lord. So when you see wicked people, does it make you angry? Well, it's okay if it makes you angry, but it also should bring compassion to you. If you only have the anger and you don't have the compassion, there's something wrong with you, not just them. So worldly people, wicked people, it should bring great compassion to us to want to see them saved. And if you want to see them saved and you're interceding for them, there's a decent chance they're going to get saved. So in this story, Daniel steps in, God shows him the dream, he tells it to Nebuchadnezzar and he tells him the interpretation and everyone is spared. David was God's person that brought salvation to all the people in the occult. God will give you access to reach people in the occult. He'll give you access to reach people in very far-fetched religions and things like that that are just far from the truth. Have a heart to reach these people. Have a heart to pray for these people, to witness these people. And remember, the witness of your life is more important than the witness of your words. But make sure you do both, okay? So Daniel gets the interpretation. Let me tell you what the spiritual truths Daniel brought about. Actually, God did it because God gave him the dream. And I want to sow these spiritual truths into you today, okay? First one is in Daniel 2.21. And here's the truth. It says, God changes times and seasons. You got that? God changes times and seasons. It was said to Nebuchadnezzar in a dream, Daniel gave the interpretation. But I'm saying this to you today, and I'm saying this to me. God changes times and seasons. You said, man, I've had a horrible time lately. It's okay because God changes times. You say, man, I have been in a bad season in my life. It's lasted months or maybe longer than that. It's okay. There's hope because God changes seasons. I said he changes times and he changes seasons. You have to insert your faith into the bad season to see the season change. You have to insert your faith, your hope, your optimism, your vision into the bad time you're going through for the time to change. Because if the season goes bad and the time goes bad and you sink with it, you may never come out of it. If you start decreeing terrible things, the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue, they that use it, love it, will eat the fruit thereof. If things go bad, you lose your job and this and that is, the whole coronavirus thing is, is, is hitting you really bad and you go, I'll never recover from this. I'll never, this will this will ruin me, this will ruin my family, this will ruin my fight. Don't do that. Don't add injury to insult. Don't cooperate with the devil's plan for your life and sink because you can thrive while in a Babylonian season in your life. The second truth is in Daniel 2 verse 22 and it says God reveals things to you. So if you're in this bad season in your life, bad time in your life, or a good time for that matter. God's promise is, I'll reveal things to you. You say, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get out of this. God will reveal things to you. You say, but my mind is cloudy and, and, and I, I don't feel like I can hear anything from God. You've got to shut the outer stuff out. That's why the Bible says, enter your closet and pray to God in secret. Get alone with God. And maybe you say, I'm not getting out of the closet till I hear something from the Lord. You say, what if that takes days? Is it not worth days to be in that closet to hear from God? It's time to go up to the mountain. It's time like Moses to go up to the mountain and come out with God's directives in your life. God reveals things to you. Many verses teach that. In the book of John chapter 16, it says the Holy Spirit shows you things to come. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, listen to this. It says, Call unto me, as God speaking, call unto me, and I will answer thee, 
and show you great and mighty things which you know not. This is a promise of revelation. This is a promise. You don't have to be the preacher, the prophet, or anybody else to hear from God. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. That's a promise. My sheep know my voice. There have been times I was doing the worst in my life, yet I still could hear from God. There are times I've been on the highest point of my life, and I can hear my God, from my God. Why? Because I'm a sheep, and I know I have authority. I have the right to hear from God because my sheep know my voice, and another they will not follow. And I know if I call unto him, he will show me great things, mighty things, which I don't currently know. I know the Holy Spirit will show me things to come. And then the third truth taught in the book of Daniel, in these chapters 1 and 2, in the interpretation of the dream, is in chapter 2, verse 44. Listen to this. The truth is that God will set up a kingdom, and his kingdom will crush all other kingdoms. And friend, he's already begun to set up that kingdom in your life. Because the Bible says the kingdom of God is inside you. It's not some future kingdom that we're waiting for. And when that day happens, that'll be the first time we taste, touch, and smell victory. No. The teaching is, I will set up a kingdom. Jesus came to this earth. He came, the kingdom of God came to live inside us. That kingdom is already working and walking and manifesting in this earth. And the Bible promises that kingdom will crush all other kingdoms. So the kingdom of drugs, that kingdom is more powerful. The, the kingdom of fear, this kingdom living on the inside of you, is more dominant and more powerful to cast out the spirit of fear. That's why the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You can thrive in Babylon, friend. I can thrive in Babylon. So what was the fruit that came from Daniel's obedience and his interpretation of these dreams and his faithfulness to deliver the message to the king? First of all, the king sees that Daniel knows what he dreamed. Now that's freaky. And he realized Daniel had a relationship with the true God of gods, the true God of heaven. He put it as God of gods. Here's how Nebuchadnezzar concluded. He said, Daniel's king or Daniel's God is the most high God. So Nebuchadnezzar, who was a polytheist, believed in many gods, now is coming to realize, yeah, there's all these entities out there, but there is a God in heaven that reigns all over these entities and reigns higher than these entities. And that's why Nebuchadnezzar started to have faith in this God. And he promotes Daniel and his three friends, and he promotes them in the kingdom. I mean, he promotes Daniel as ruler of his kingdom. You can prosper, you can be promoted, you can rule even if you find yourself living in a very bad situation, God can still prosper you. You're blessed going in, blessed coming out. You're the head and not the tail. You're above only, not beneath. When the devil comes at you one way, he'll have to flee before you seven ways. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to the Lord. The silver and gold belongs to the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And this God who is all powerful lives on the inside of us. So wherever you walk, power walks. Not because of you, not because of who you are, but because of whose you are. And the last thing that we conclude from this story is this story is not just about Daniel being promoted several thousand years ago. It's about God wanting to promote you and me today. Jesus forgives our sins. He cleanses us. He gives us a new beginning. So even if you've done a bunch of things deserving of a very bad future, you could say, Father, forgive me for those things. Give me a crop failure. And now you start to plant new seeds in your life and you watch. You will be promoted. You will be blessed. You will be raised up, not because you're great, but because you know him who is great. I hope that message blessed you today. One more thing. If you've never given your life to Christ, today's your day. I sent a text out to someone a couple weeks ago and I said, Easter Sunday is your day to give your life to the Lord. You could get saved Easter Sunday. Call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. And I ask you to do that today. Pray with me. I'm going to pray out loud. You pray in your heart after I pray. Just sentence after sentence. Just say this. Say, dear Lord Jesus, today I give you my life. I give you my heart. I will serve you forever. 
I believe in you. You're the son of God. You're raised from the dead, alive forevermore. I want you in my life. Accept me, forgive me, save my soul. Amen. Wow, what an incredible word. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us for our online church service. Don't forget to follow our Vision Kids page as well as our Refuge page and get that Right Now Media account set up so you can join us in our Thriving in Babylon series. Yeah, so here's the deal. We, we'll see you next week, whether it's online or at Drive-In Church. We look forward to seeing you. Have a great day.